Now we think about change, that means constantly having to be bold with our ideas, be prepared to go on journeys where we don't necessarily have the full facts, we're going to try, experiment, iterate, we're going to have to learn. Now if we do that in an environment where it's not safe to offer an opinion, where it's a career limiting move to do something where it leads to a mistake, we're not going to be able to get the, the benefit of any of the change we hope to realise. All of us know that change doesn't happen in one foul swoop. It's a lot of decisions that happen over an extended period of time. And so psychological safety is critical for some of the core components we know we need to successfully manage change. In 2022, you know, the average employee was part of about 10 organisational change initiatives. So it's not just this idea of one change and transformation journey. It's this idea we're part of multiple all the time. I think a big thing twofold, one is we've got to start having conversations at organisations about how we manage energy, not just how we manage time, and thinking about this notion of proactive rest, because change requires willpower. Willpower is absolutely an exhaustible muscle. So we need to think about how are we going to acknowledge and give some flex to our people, some productive downtime in order that they can reboot and go again. That idea that you can live constantly in that change state, we know that that doesn't hold. We know we're seeing burnout as a consequence of that. So that's a little bit of a, a different conversation that we're starting to have um, with regards to thinking about that. I think the second thing is we need to ruthlessly prioritise which change matters the most. If it's going to come at a trade-off, where is it that we're putting our energy and effort? Where are we telling our people to focus? Fear of failure is, is, is again something that's kind of baked into our culture because we have this idea that we should all know everything that we need to know. Of course we can't because the context is changing so rapidly around us. And so what matters is being able to have a go at something and see what happens as a result of that. There's a degree of, of, of courage that's required to be able to do this. And again, that's, that's not so much a characteristic that we've appreciated in, in our leaders. So growing the, the capacity to demonstrate some courage and to encourage your workforce to actually have a go at things and help them know that they won't get slammed if things don't go entirely according to plan. Well, I think it's about modelling that best behaviour, modelling you know, what, what you want to see happening in your organisation, that it's there in your own demeanour, that you're not, you know, that leaders can be empathetic and open and really, you know, engage with people, not being you know, this is my way and that, that's the only way it can be because that's not going to take people with them. You know, you really want to be building organisations that are as respectful and inclusive and, you know, where you can have these difficult conversations but in an open and kind way. We have to be open in a way to knowing our history a bit better. If we know our history, we'll see how things have changed and they've really changed because people on the ground have said this is just not acceptable you know we, we we can't treat women as second class citizens we can't discriminate against people on the basis of their skin color with you know the, those sorts of big social changes happen because people care and make the effort and that's i think you know hanging on to that not a sort of wishful hope but a muscular hope i think is really important our culture um, our, our way of dealing with complexity is to draw a box around things and take and to ignore everything that's kind of outside of the box. And what that does is, is accidentally make things worse. So our, our temptation is to simplify things. And we do that because it's overwhelming if we don't, right? That's because we, haven't, we don't have the tools um, to engage with complexity and it's possible to learn about those tools. And in fact, um, you know, our, in, our Indigenous peoples here in Australia, they're, I think, the original system thinkers because their way of understanding the world is completely relational. So start by thinking about the connections that matter in your space. And start by thinking about how you can skill up you and your workforce in this systemic kind of way of thinking rather than systematic. So systematic is if there's then that chug, chug, chug like a machine. Um, and systemic is how nature works. I think with the right kind of training and skills and preparation, you can be ready for anything up to a point. I knew from an early stage in my career, professional development, that the kind of doctor I wanted to be was not someone who spent their whole life dealing with the same thing every day, but could deal with whatever rolled through the door next. And that requires a certain risk appetite. It certainly requires broad skills. It also requires compromise. And I mean that in, in a positive way, not in, in terms of, say, reducing the quality of care for patients, or reducing the quality of service provided by an organisation. I mean compromise in the sense of trying to find the best possible solution under the circumstances with the resources available, including the time, people, funds, etc. For a community organisation or for a community, uh, being willing to roll with the punches 
develop the right kind of experience and be ready to deal with anything and make compromise where necessary are the kinds of attributes and attitudes that you need to have. There's a fine balance that needs to be struck between having the experience and training to be able to do what needs to be done and, and having the instincts, both intrinsic and learned, to be able to say, this needs doing now. I think that is uh, an important thing to be taught. Uh, I think it's also partly innate. And that means that when it comes to leadership, we need to be careful about who we're selecting to be leaders, making sure that they have the right characteristics, attributes and abilities to make those tough decisions at the time, but they also have the skills and training to be able to implement them appropriately.